Hello, this is Insane Monster, and we are doing part one of What If Asla Was Igneo's Son. Now, if you want to recap too bad, just go watch part zero. Now, now when we left off, uh, Asta and Meli Leona were going to the Grimoire Tower near Ha's village since they were in the neutral zone. When they got there, they... Everybody rec saw Asta, a, uh, let's say about a 5 foot 10, with reddish hair, and his ears covered up, with his, with the top of his ears covered up with the headband. And like in the, uh, anime, uh, you know, still gets his four leaf, but, for a second, you see that time looks like it's frozen then a red light extends and it finds the five leaf grimoire that the demon dwells in that well the grimoire in the anime and all that you know and we have a little scene where Igneo talks to it they bargain and Igneo wants him to work with his son and himself to help them deal with the demon he can already sense that his power is unleashed already after 500 years and the demon is okay with that since he'd rather kill them than ha let them have their way in this world so they strike a bargain then time flows normally for, for everybody and you just hear a bang 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 with a grimoire bursting from the walls going straight for Asta. And the moment he touches it, it starts to glow red, and it changes to where it has a four-leaf and a five-leaf clover on it on the head of a, of, the, of a dragon image on the grimoire. Everybody's surprised that about what just happened. Why was a grimoire in the wall? Also, how did the grimoire just change like that out of nowhere. And why does it have two clovers on it? Though, there was some commotion. Asta and Meliona just kind of walked off sent because Meliona grabbed him and wanted to talk to him for a little bit. She told him, Well, kid, you're old enough and now you got your grimoire. So you don't have to hide anymore. Alter replies with, you mean my wings and scales, right? She flies, yes, also, here. This was with you when we found you. Austin knows he that he was adopted by Mela Leona and everything. He was told a while ago. But not a lot of people know that fact. But Austin takes the bag and was kind of curious. Do you know what it, what's inside? You know, and I said, no, whatever, whatever this bag is, it has magic on it that will only let certain people open it. I'd have to imagine that if it was with you, then you'd be able to open it. Asa just walks off to go think. He uses his wings to fly on top of the grimoire tower and takes a look inside the bag. First thing he pulls out was a scarf. That had a letter wrapped in it. He uh, took a little bit of time to think and opened the letter. It told him about who his parents were and why he ended up where he did and not with them. They were attacked. His mother, an elf named Fauna. His father, the fire dragon king Igneo. He thinks that this does make some sense with his wings and scales that he can that he can grow and everything but it's a little hard to process he continues reading saying that they were attacked and they had somebody who had the power to send him someplace safe to do so along with something his dad was working on to revive the, the dragon race also was confused, thinking, wait, the, from what 
the stories the nobles pass on say the dragons and the elves have been extinct for for hundreds of years so how he just shakes it out of his mind just continuing reading it tells him about the lacrimas in the bag that are to be used to revive the dragon race well at least that was Igniel's plan he just breathes not sure what to do with all this information or whether or not he should revive the dragon race though there was something else at the bottom that he overlooked at first when he took a second look he saw a sentence he said there is this warning that you should be wary of beware the invasion of the devils Asta knows what a devil is but he's not sure how dangerous one is but he just puts the letter back and with the scarf he has now he just wraps it around looking out when he hears a commotion two nobles were Roar, were very pissed at you know for getting a four-leaf gro grimoire because he was a commoner as in canon you know beats the nobles and the chain maids captures them then asta swoops down and interrupts the chain maids just looks at him saying don't get in my way and binds asta with the chains when he does, he senses how much magic Asta has and yells, What are you? Some kind of monster? When Asta suddenly bursts out of the chains with sheer force, his grimoire starts to be opening, and a demon dweller sword pops out, covered in black flames. Before anything else, Asta grabs it and slams it into the chain mates and bedding him into the wall. He takes another look at Nuno and he takes a whiff. He says, Oh, so you're that kid from ten years ago. He walks over to Yuno and it took Yuno a little bit, but he recognized Asta. Wait, you're him? You're that kid with the wings? Asta pops out his wings saying, Yeah, Pretty much. They have a little chat as the chain maids get hauled away, and Melly Leona and Asta go off to to the Crimson Lions. But uh, a day after they got there, Asta went go talk to Melly Leona about something. He told him her about see he told her about the letter he got what it said, and about the lacrimas. He also told her about the warning that they gave him. Beware the devil's invasion. So, Melly Leona wasn't sure what to think about it, but it, it kind of made sense to her, considering Asa's scales, his wings, as well as his pointed ears he hides using his headband. She thinks for a moment and says, Asta, the dragon part we can't really hide. We can just say that the pointed ears are just part of that. They aren't as pointed as the, uh, as the stories say about the elves, so we can. So that might work. But you can't say anything about the elves. Anything about your mother being one. Not even sure how that's even possible. They were supposed to be de long dead. Austin knows about the bad history with the Clover Kingdom royalty and the elves, so he understands. Then he get, pulls up something out of the bag, a crystal, and he puts it on the on the little table aside. Melo Leona saying, "Even it, I'm not sure if I'm doing the right thing. From what I've heard, dragons were." noble and strong so 
I think it would be a good thing if they came back, but only some people should be allowed that chance. The, that lacrima is a sun dragon lacrima. And I know of all people, I can trust you with it. I know you did raise me, Ma. So, Eliana says, I'll think about it. As he takes the crystal in her hand. As Asta left the room, he said, I'm going to put a challenge in my way to show that I can get to show that I can get things done. To show that I'm worthy of being the wizard king. Emeliona not sure what he means by that, but also but before she asks he says, also, I'll be going to the neutral zone by myself to get some training in before the magic night to Sam. I'll be leaving tomorrow. Some time passes with Asa going to the neutral zone. He meets the guy who teaches him how to use a sword. Though he doesn't really care that he's a Diamond Kingdom mage, knowing that he's a bit of an outcast from there, so... Not re he doesn't really worry about it much. But when time was coming, he went. Oh, he stopped by Hodge Village, since it was the closest, to get some water in his little cantina thing. So, sorry, and uh, he saw Yuno leaving as well. He caught up with them and, and asked if if they wanted to travel together to go to the Magic Knights' Dam. Asta tells him why he, he's there to begin with, and on the way there, they get to talking, and he can tell you know is a, is a good guy. Little bit cold sometimes, but decent. And his in his mind, he's thinking, I don't think a four-leaf grimoire would choose somebody who's bad, so maybe I can trust him with it. He opens up. One night, when they're in the campfire during their travel, Asta takes out his grimoire and opens up the book. And he says, Flame st storage magic. Dragon jar. And then a jar comes out, out of his grimoire that has the bag his parents left him. When he reaches into it, he pulls out the sky dragon lacrima. He gives, you know, a rundown of everything about him and the lacrimas, but he leaves out the part about the elves heeding Meli Leona's advice. You know, is taken aback by this, but he takes the grimoire and puts it in his pocket for now. At when they arrive at the Magic Knight Exam, everybody is shocked to see that there's two four leaf. Grimoire users at the same exam. Uh, things go a lot differently for Asta in this canon. For one, during the flight, the flight part of the exam, Asta just sprouts his wings and starts flying, which freaks people out, obviously. Marksman test, Asta just shoots a fireball out of his mouth. And for the creation test, Asta just makes a little emblem, a dragon emblem thing with his flames. And things go the same for Yuno in the battle part, but Asta ends up fighting another royal, one using water magic. Thinking he has the upper hand since Asta uses flame magic. Right off the bat, the water may mage royal uses his magic to encase Asta in a giant spear of water. He thinks he's already won when he sees a bright light coming from the orb. And the water ball that he trapped Asta in is just boiling away. Then it just bursts! He's thrown back a little bit and when he tries to get up He's met with a fire dragon fist to the gut. 
blowing him right into the wall. Declaring Asta the winner. Now we get to the selection of which squad. Same thing happens with Yuna with everybody raising his their hands for him. But this time Asta also gets the same acknowledgement. But he says, I choose the Black Bulls. Everybody's surprised, especially for Goleon, which is basically his uncle. He stands up asking, why do you choose the Black Bulls? Asta replies with, because I want to show that I'm worthy of becoming the Wizard King. So I'll join the Black Bulls and make them the best Magic Knight squad. One of the best. One of the best. The Goleon just kind of smiles, saying, that's quite the ambition. And Yami just laughs, say, glad that he got someone freakishly strong on his squad. And thinking that this kid might be pretty fun. Once they get to the Black Bulls hideout, well, before that, actually, Meliona approaches him because he was watching where people wouldn't see her. And she tells Asta, So that's what you meant before you left, huh? Now that's an obstacle, if I've ever seen one. Good luck. There wasn't much word exchanged from them as they left, but they did smile. Once Asta got to the Black Bull hides out, he sees Luck and Magna just attacking one another with a stray fireball going at him. Asta just, instead of getting blasted away, just punches it, annihilating Magna's fire. Then same happens... The physical part with the uh, baptism stuff, and then the combat part. When Magna goes to throw all those fireballs, Asa just eats them. Then he pulls out his demon slayer sword that is, again, covered in black flames. And when Magna goes for the giant fireball, Asa reacts and slams it with the side of the blade reflecting it. As in canon, Magna calls Os the Manly, he gets his black bull robe, but there's a silvered haired girl looking from on top of the base, thinking, so he's in this squad too, huh? Interesting. And that is where we'll be leaving this off for right now and sorry if I started a little bit uh, not really feeling that good but please remember to like subscribe and comment and also please check out the discord and ring the bell see you later